a tissue is defined as a group of similar cells. There are four major types of tissues in the human body. The classification is based on either functional or structural properties of the tissue. Each tissue type can be subclassified. The four major types are epithelium, connective tissue, muscles and nerves. The slide in front of us is a section of human trachea showing at least two types of tissues clearly. The tissue that covers surfaces of the body such as skin or lines the cavities that communicate with outside such as respiratory system, digestive system and uh, urinary system is known as epithelium. Epithelial cells create a boundary or a barrier between the open surface and connective tissue underneath. Epithelial cells have to be closely located in rows and thus lie adjacent to each other creating a single or multiple layers. All these cells are closely packed. Intracellular space is very minimum. Subclassification of epithelium is based on either shape of the cells such as ischemus, cuboidal or columnar and whether the cells are arranged in a single layer or multiple layers. If the cells are arranged in a single layer, epithelium is called if the cells are arranged in multiple layers, the epithelium is called stratified. Ischemus means flattened. These cells are arranged like tiles over the floor to provide a smooth surface. Cuboidal cells have the same heights and widths like cubes. Columnar epithelial cells are much taller than their width as in this case. What we have here in case of respiratory epithelium is called ciliated pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium which means although epithelium is single layered but random location of the nuclei in the D cells deceptively make it looks like a stratified epithelium. In other words the epithelium is simple but it looks like stratified and that is why it is known as pseudo stratified. All cells that are reaching surface also have tiny hair like structures known as cilia. All these cells are attached to the basal membrane although some cannot reach the surface. The ones that cannot reach the surface are known as basal cells and these are stem cells that eventually mature into different types of mucosal cells. They can mature into columnar epithelial cells or goblet cells for example. The life of matured cells can be very short and thus epithelium needs continuous supply of new cells. The epithelium that covers inside of the blood vessels and lymphatic vessels is known as known as endothelium. You will often hear a word mucosa. Mucosa refers to at least three different layers of tissues namely epithelium which can be with or without glands, a basement membrane which supports and holds epithelium and a layer of underlying connective tissue which is also known as lamina propria. It also sometimes includes a deeper layer of smooth muscles. In case of slide in front of us, the epithelium also has a number of unicellular glands known as goblet cells. Goblet cells produce and discharge mucus. Goblet cells are easily recognized by their wine glass shapes. Mucus is made and stored within goblet cells as mucinogen granules. All mucinogen is stored towards the apical area of cells which is discharged when needed. But because mucinogen is water soluble and it is lost during H and E staining, the space within goblet cells appears empty. Their nuclei are flattened or triangular in shape. So this is a nucleus of a goblet cell. This is another one here. So these are triangular and flattened in shape. Mucus 
is a thick fluid which contains special proteins coated with sugar. Mucus performs several important functions such as lubrication, trapping of pathogens and dust particles in respiratory mucosa. Excess production of mucus or accumulation can also create infections or other problems. For example, in case of asthma, mucus can actually block a lobe of lung and prevent air entry causing partial lung collapse. Although this slide in front of us is taken from trachea, but nearly all of the air conducting portion is lined by ciliated pseudo-stratified columnar epithelial cells. And this remains almost unchanged as we go down to large bronchioles. However, number of goblet cells decreases. Ciliated epithelial cells can be present even in respiratory bronchioles to prevent mucus accumulation in alveoli. Cilia keep pushing mucus towards the mouth. If there were no cilia, lungs would quickly fill with mucus and stop exchange of gases. It is also important to note that columnar cells are quite thick and they do not allow passive diffusion in other parts of the body such as in intestines epithelial cells have microvilli instead of cilia in intestines epithelial cells use a system known as active transport to transport nutrients from intestines to venous blood the process in simple words is known as absorption lamina propria connective tissue of mucosa is known as lamina propria and is a loose connective tissue. One of the main functions is to provide support to epithelium. It is rich in blood supply as you can see multiple blood vessels with erythrocytes or red blood cells within it. It contains numerous cells most importantly fibroblasts that primarily make the connective tissue but also mast cells, plasma cells and lymphocytes. We will have a detailed look at uh, the connective tissue in our next video. Thank you very much and these are the references.